absolute bombshell today. It's amazing how far we've come in a couple of short years and what's been going on in the background. Today, we get to take a peek behind the curtain of what's been happening with the SEC, the Ripple plea deal, SEC being caught in lies, and again, what's going to be happening with the Bitcoin spot ETF. Now, it's Saturday, and uh, it's a little bit of a sideways day. We've got to see the market cap around $1.7 trillion. But what's interesting to note is that Solana and BNB have been flipping back and forth over the last two or three hours. And right now, Solana has flipped uh, Binance Chain. It looks like they're at $41 billion, $741 million. And uh, they're in that fourth coveted spot. And uh, then it goes BNB, then XRP, and so on and so forth. And we'll see if they can uh, move the way up the ranks. But there's a long way to go before they hit catch up to Tether, which that'd be over a 2x, but we'll see how it goes. But today, what I want to talk to you about is bombshells. And this is uh, Stuart Alderati. He is the chief legal officer for Ripple, and he was the one that orchestrated the defense against the SEC versus Ripple case. And this just came out late yesterday. And he says, before the SEC sued Ripple, Chris and Brad, Brad Garlinghouse, three years ago today, they offered us the following settlement the SEC would announce to the market that XRP is a security, and the market will be given a short window to come into compliance. So imagine that. You are one of the first to get sued as far as a crypto company, and the SEC comes and goes, listen, we're going to be pretty friendly with you. All you got to do is just bend the knee just a little bit, and we're going to allow you to move forward. Everybody does it. Jamie Dimon, JP Morgan does it. Wells Fargo does it. We slap them on the wrist, but they're allowed to move forward, and we're going to give you the same opportunity. And what Ripple said was, are you out of your mind? We're not going to play a ball. Not only are we not going to play a ball, we're going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to fight you because we think you're trash. He stated, we said no, because one, XRP is not a security, and two, the SEC never built a framework for crypto compliance. No matter the spin that Clayton, Hinneman, Gensler, or anyone else puts on the case now, it was always the same thing, one thing, proving that XRP is not in and of itself a security. We put everything on the line, and boy, did they. Few thought we would win, but we did. In the process, we exposed the SEC for the hypocritical tyrant it is in the industry in the U.S. Live to fight another day onward to 2024. And I have to tell you, I don't care if you hate XRP and Ripple or if you're warming up to the idea, but we all owe Ripple and their legal defense team a huge congratulations for standing up to the bully that is. Now, I said this on the show many a time. The only way to beat a bully is you have to punch him in the mouth because if you don't, they're going to come at you, and they're going to come at you again and again and again because, let's be honest, the SEC is mafiosa types. That's just really what it comes down to. If you don't believe me, just ask Kraken. This uh, this was last month, and is because people forget. I always want to remind people about what happens. The SEC sued Kraken again. They sued them a year prior, nine months prior, for their what they were doing was staking. They said, you can't do staking. Then they And then they said, okay, just bend the knee, just pay a little bit. Uh, to us, just like Jamie Morgan and all the banks do, we'll let you keep going. And they did it, and they came back again. Huge mistake. Here's what it was all about. A lawsuit against Kraken named specific cryptos. The SEC considers securities and alleges Kraken is running an unregistered securities exchange but are offering them for sale. These tokens included Cardano, Cosmos, Dash, Filecoin, ICP, Polygon, and Solana, among others. And that, of course, affected the price of those cryptos, but didn't last long because everybody saw through that. And unfortunately, Kraken is uh, going through this process right now. But the first time, once you bend the knee once, it's hard to come back. The thing that I would like to make mention is of this. And if this is true, this is not good. And the question was, Kraken co-mingled customer funds. Co-mingling or mixing customer funds with his own is another allegation Kraken faces in the SEC's complaint. This is also the big complaint for FTX and what led to its downfall. So if this is true, then, of course, this is obviously extremely bad. But who are we going to believe? The SEC, who just got caught in some lies, or Kraken, who just unfortunately went down the wrong path? Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And I have to tell you, as much as Gary's been losing, he sure comes out with fire. This was, uh, again, a couple of days ago, and he came out on, I think it was CNBC, and just said, look, uh, there is nothing but uh, bad actors. They are hypocrites and scam artists and liars. And that is essentially what the crypto market is, and they're not in compliance. I want you to listen to this, and I want you to see just how important it is for the community to step up and what they did. So listen to what this is. This is a minute of Gary talking. A lot of non-compliance, non-compliance with the securities laws that are there to help 
give you the disclosure so you can make the investment decision, but also to protect you against fraud and manipulation. And there's been far too much fraud and, and bad actors in the crypto field. There's a lot of non-compliance, not only with the securities laws, but other laws around anti-money laundering and protecting the public. This is really the Wild West and it's around the globe. I would, I would say again, this is a small part of our US capital markets, but it can undermine confidence when so many people have been hurt and all they can do is then stand in line at a bankruptcy court. And, and it's not just one actor and it's not just, oh, it's just a few bad actors over here. This is something that pervades a lot of this uh, field globally. And it's hard for the good faith actors even to compete because there's so many challenges elsewhere. First of all, let's be honest. He's right. There are some bad actors in the field. I cannot deny that. Let's take a look at, oh, I don't know, the Voyagers, the Celsius, the FTX, the BlockFi, and all the different centralized exchanges that have went awry, not to mention all the different crypto projects that have been rug pulls. There are a lot of them out there. So I'm not taking anything away from what Gary says. However, it seems to me that Gary and the SEC seems to think that everybody is guilty until proven innocent. That's not the way it goes. So when you're going to come on a live show and talk about things and say that everything is essentially bad and that you should just come into compliance, that is just not the way that it should be. And that is why I like Twitter or X that it's called now because they have these community notes. And under everything that people will say, the community is allowed to pop off and say, hey, stuff like this, crypto companies like Coinbase, publicated uh, public company that the SEC oversaw the listing of, has been trying to gain clarity and SEC guidance for compliance for the past few years. The SEC has not taken a clear stance and has relied on regulation by enforcement and they cite their sources. So again, I'm not taking anything away from what Gary is saying, Partially, it is true. But of course, there is a big difference between saying that everybody's guilty and there's a couple of bad actors. Let me just think about that in the comment section. And then one of our last pieces here is this, which is as much as Gary's fighting for the for the man, for the, the small man behind the, behind the scenes, you have to understand that when they go too far and they overstep their boundaries, this will happen again. Everybody's guilty until proven innocent. SEC deeply regrets errors related to crypto firm enforcement case. So lawyers representing the US SEC have responded in court to over claims they spun a false narrative to avoid dismissal of an enforcement case against a mining software firm. And when I read this, I want you to start to really think about what the SEC is capable of as far as lies and manipulation to get what they want, because they can do it here. They can do it anywhere. In December 21st filings, SEC said it, fa it failed to be accurate and candid in earlier court filings claiming software firm Debtbox closed certain bank accounts and planned to relocate to the United Arab Emirates or UAB in an alleged attempt to escape the commission's jurisdiction. What they failed to mention was this, that yes, that they did close those bank accounts, but they reopened other bank accounts in other banks for whatever reason that they want to do. Either it was it was uh, cheaper fees or it was a better access or whatever else it was. What they said to the court was, they closed down their bank accounts. They are attempting to flee. You need to freeze everything now so we can step in. And that's what the courts did. Now, I'm not so much concerned with somebody getting things wrong. We all do it. Nobody's perfect. That absolutely happens. What I'm concerned of is this. The commission's representatives failed to accurately characterize the basis for their factual assertions. This is from the actual judge in the case. They failed to identify references or inferences as such and to explain the basis for these inferences and failed to identify inaccuracies in those assertions once discovered. It is one thing to lie and is another thing to continue to lie once you know the truth. And again, think about all the things that the SEC could do moving forward. And this is just a little bit of context. And this is also from uh, uh, Ripple's chief tech officer, David Schwartz. He states, in most cases, the SEC's admission wouldn't be such a big deal because the other party would argue the other side. SEC would come in and say, look, they're trying to shut things down and move things across. Then, of course, uh, the other side could say, no, we're not doing that. Here's the, here's the information. But here, this was an ex part emergency proceeding with the SEC asking for immediate extraordinary relief giving no opportunity for the other side to be heard. 
essentially shutting everything down because they said so. So hopefully moving forward, we don't see too many more cases like this, but I will not hold my breath. And because of all these losses, I will say, maybe the ETF could actually be approved. Just to make this really quick, Bloomberg Intelligence analyst Eric Gobelchunas predicted that each Bitcoin ETF hopeful will need to have explicit authorized participant parameters in its S1 before it's considered for approval. And he states this is no easy last step and may keep some from the starting gate. What it's really saying is this, if you're going to be allowed to invest into a spot Bitcoin ETF, there's gonna to have to be some parameters. And that's gonna mean that only certain individuals are gonna be allowed to actually invest in this spot Bitcoin ETF, thereby reducing the overall effect. Unfortunately, this is going to reduce, again, the overall people that are in there, but it's one of those things that we have to jump through the hoops for the SEC or else they won't actually approve it. Me personally, I think we've done just fine not having to have a spot ETF. I still think it's a narrative that helps. And of course, yes, billions of dollars will flow in. But to me, it's not a question of if this will happen, it's really about when. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Things are gonna move pretty quickly, so try to get your information from something you trust, but that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next one.